But we've got time for one more question. Yes. Make it easy. <laughs> Make it for you. Right. The front here. Um, I first came to you as a, as a feminist writer, and I was wondering how feminism shapes your nature writing, mm. if at all. Uh, I don't know. It worries me to. I would still call myself a feminist. I think it is less present in my writing. Um, and I don't quite know what one does about like that. Do you think that the new nature writing um, sees nature as a, a gendered concept? I had a very delightful... Um, I shared a platform at the East Nook Festival last year um, with Catherine Jenny, who is also a feminist and also a new nature writer. Um, and we've been none too flattering about various people. And so somebody from the audience said, uh, uh, well, what do you think is the problem with all this other people's new nature writing? And we kind of looked at each other and we started to giggle. She said, you tell I said, no, you tell her. And finally she said, Tweedy boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I do, yes, I do think it's a problem. What I'm not sure is if she or I or Linda Cracknell, um, I mean, thank you, some of the, sorry, I haven't got I on my list. I can't say thank you, some of the better uh, new nature writers. But the non kind of limited to my favourite species writers who are slightly problematic. I mean, I think we're all feminists, and I think we don't know quite how to do it. That the boys own that territory in quite complicated ways because they have the territory of adventure. Um, so, do you think you're doing it differently? Well, I'm certainly doing it differently, but I don't know if it's because I'm a feminist. <laughs> I think Catherine Jane is certainly doing it differently, but I think if you read it, well, let's take her writing because it's easier for me, um, since I think it's very good, but I think mine's very good as well, but we get confused if I say so. <laughs> um, I think if you read Catherine's, you'd think of it much more that she's a socialist and has a very clear um, analysis about land ownership and what that emotional ownership means and how it's alienated and who owns what and what we might do. Um, I'm not quite sure if you would know, except that she's there doing it, that she was also a feminist. I don't know how you quite insert that into the text, which is one of the great things about having the fairy stories, because there's lots and lots of feminists can do that. <laughs> in Gossip from the Forest, it's both in nature writing, it's also a retelling of some of the classical fairy stories, um, which is a jolly good place to put in a kind of a chunk of um, feminist reconstruction. I don't know, it's difficult. I mean, I still do, I still see myself as a feminist fiction writer, but I'm not quite sure how with this. Um, in this uh, little book here, um, How to Learn, I had a terrible, terrible fight with my editor because I wanted to write a chapter or a section of it about how much more difficult it was for women and why. And of course, very difficult for women to be alone because of the chronic fear of rape. And of. She did not want it in the book. She thought it was negative, it was a downer. And in fact, it wasn't in the book because I just got tired of arguing with her and wanted to get my completion money. <laughs> I said that without any pride. Um, it's a really, really kind of tricky issue. Um, the, there are aspects of it. I mean, you can obviously avoid sexist language, and I think I do. You can avoid uh, the dominant male in bird species, for example. You can avoid the ridiculous sexual language of Linnaeus to talk about uh, plant propagation. <laughs> and you can do all those things, but whether or not it's actually a gender argument um, to make about it. I mean, there's kind of jokes you can make about it. Well, it's uh, gone on too long, so I'm going to stop. Um, but in in, uh, in this book, there is a, one of the chapters is about going into a forest to steal a Christmas tree. Um, and in the middle of stealing the Christmas tree, very, very icy, very cold, Christmas Eve, uh, when suddenly there is a rifle shot, really quite near. Um, one of the things about snow is it does very strange things to sound, so it's very difficult to judge how far away it was. So first of all, there is this rifle shot, which seemed extremely loud and near. And then three roe deer, a small woodland deer we have. Um, oh, oh, my dog started barking. Okay. These three deer jump onto the track we're walking on between me and the dog, which is by bad luck. The dog <laughs> um, is barking. 
I'm freaked. On the day of trying to work out what to do, skids and falls out a thwomp on its side. And then they all get up and the deer go off and the dog goes off and I don't hear any more of the gunshot. I had a real fear that I think was a female fear about being in the wood with dangerous blokes. Um, there was no reason to believe that they were dangerous in any way, um, but on the whole, the people who are out there are men, and I think women have vulnerabilities that they don't, and that some of the kind of terror of Big Nothing is particular for women. Um, so I do try and write about those issues, that whole kind of issue of, of, of violence, um, and also of quad bike revving. <laughs> a closely related issue. Yeah, you're walking in some very, very beautiful and very isolated woods and you suddenly have plow it up quad tracks and enormous quantities of empty beer cans which have not been removed. Well, you know, first of all, I know lots of women who ride quad bags and I even know quite a lot of women who drink a lot of beer. Um, but there's still, that seems to me to be in, um, as markers of masculinity when you have guns to it. <laughs> Even though I have no evidence to believe this wasn't a perfectly proper and legitimate uh, um, <coughs> dear colour. So I think the whole business about feminism and this sort of writing is one of the tensions out of which I think I write and thank you for bringing it up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Can we have a final <laughs>